Hello, this is uh, Wallace Levin, and uh, this is uh, San Francisco Veterans Report. And we're at the Presidio of San Francisco. And uh, you're going to see today how the Memorial Day ceremony at the Presidio is put together. You will be interviewing a few folks. And uh, I think you'll find it interesting to see how the San Francisco Presidio Memorial Day ceremony is put together and what happens during that ceremony. Uh, Marines here and uh, I'm going to have them uh, give me their name, rank and uh, serial number and also tell us uh, what war they were in. We'll start with this gentleman uh, dressed in overseas cap. I, I wore this on Okinawa. That, that hat was one of my favorites. Uh, go ahead, identify yourself. Major George W. Parker, reserve officer, without pay or benefits, active in the Second World War, uh, in combat on Saipan. Okay, did you watch the uh, the show uh, Pacific that was recently on uh, on TV? No, I'm waiting till I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> on the videotapes. <laughs> I didn't see it yet. <laughs> well, all, the, all I can tell you is you, you watch that show and you can see how heroic uh, you guys were uh, on, all, on taking all those islands, especially the Marines. Okay, I'm going to move on to another hero. Uh, Don Reed. I uh, served in Korea in 51 and 52 and uh, was discharged from the Marine Corps as a sergeant and uh, I enjoyed very much uh, being in that uh, a part of the 1st Marine Division, a glorious operation, the most decorated division in the history of our nation. Uh, you mentioned the Pacific. I thought it was uh, extremely well done and uh, really something that serves to uh, inform uh, our youth of the, of the great effort you know, that was shown by the soldiers and sailors and Marines during the Second World War. Okay, you, uh, you've been a leader uh, locally with the, uh, with the Marines Memorial, and uh, um, fortunately uh, I was still attending uh, college during that first terrible year, and I see uh, by your Korean medal, uh, mine has no stars because I was a radio intercept operator, but I see you got three stars. Could you sort of tell us a little bit about that? Because there's, uh, there's only five, uh, five million out of the 26 million are Korean War veterans. Tell us a little bit about your service in Korea. Yeah, I was a, uh, I was a machine gunner during the, uh, during the Korean War, and I arrived there in uh, August of 1951 and uh, served in a capacity of uh, of an assistant uh, machine gunner and ammunition carrier for six months until I became a gunner, uh, which I did for the for the last uh, seven months of the uh, of my stay in Korea. And the three battle stars represent the the uh, summer uh, spring offensive of uh, 51, the winter offensive of uh, 1952, 51, 52, and then the spring of summer offensive of 1952. Well, you're you're a hero, and you're that 10 percent that faced the enemy eyeball to eyeball. And uh, uh, I know you do great work uh, for the veterans here in San Francisco. And thank you. Thank you. Well, Michael Charles, United States Marine Corps, Corporal two four two five one three two, served with the uh, Bravo Company, Fifth Tank Battalion, Fifth Marine Division, and Delta Company, uh, Fifth Marine Expeditionary Brigade, Vietnam era. Okay, thank you very much. Sergeant Michael A. Page, 1108556, 3rd Marine, 3rd uh, Division, 3rd Marine Division, uh, stationed in Japan and in Pusan Perimeter. Okay, very good. Um, Alex Setio, uh, Sergeant U.S. Marine Corps, 1968-1972, uh, Vietnam, 1969-70, and part of 71. Okay, thank you very much. All right, that, that that's... Take a picture of uh, some heroes here. The Marines are all infantry, and um, that's one of the reasons I enlisted into the Army Security Agency when they recruited me, because I didn't want to get drafted into the Marines. Didn't want to really get in the infantry. After I heard from my buddies 
what was happening to you guys over there the first uh, year especially. But you're all heroes to me and to everyone. Thank you. Okay, thanks. My name is Milton Funches. I'm a World War II veteran, Vietnam and Korea. And uh, this is a part of my life. This is our, this is our life. This is what we struggle for. And and you you uh, you're active in the VFW, the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Commander of my, my post fifty Rainbow Post fifty eight, San Francisco, uh, District fourteen now, which formerly was fifteen, but we're we're struggling and we're we're trying to go forward to keep the banner keep the banner flying. Okay, you said you're a Korean War veteran and World War Two, right? Yeah. Yes, from 1942. Okay, one, one of the things is this year is the 60th anniversary of the start of the uh, Korean War, and next year, starting tomorrow, I start planning on uh, next year, and that's going to be the 70th anniversary of the start of World War II. Right. So look forward to seeing you next year. And you, uh, those that are World War II in Korea, and you got two anniversaries to uh to celebrate that we're still uh still here good to, i've heard a lot about you you do a great job thank you okay we have the uh owner of this beautiful uh world war ii uh, jeep dick ag and uh, uh you want to tell us uh, uh anything at all about the jeep or your service or anything else well it's a 1942 uh it's uh, been extensively rebuilt, uh, probably very few original parts in it, but uh, it represents the mark of the Jeep in World War II. Okay, how long have you had this uh, Jeep? About 10 years. 10 years. It's, it, it's really in, in beautiful shape, and uh, we really thank you uh, for uh, your support every year bringing it. Uh, so this year we're going to have um, the... Uh, Council General uh, of Korea ride in your Jeep this year and we're honored uh, to have you here and we thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to interview the owner of this Jeep over here. If we can move over and take a look at this beautiful Jeep. Now, uh, if you could just tell us your name and uh, tell us a little bit something about your Jeep. My name is John Place. I uh, collect military vehicles. This one was owned by a Frenchman who purchased a lot of vehicles at the end of uh, the World War II. It was at Normandy. It was the uh, General's Jeep in the 101st Airborne. And I purchased it from him a number of years ago when he went into an old age home and couldn't keep it any longer. Okay, well that, that's really, uh, you're looking at history here. This Jeep was on Normandy on D-Day. I mean, that's there can't be too many uh, of these Jeeps around or, or any vehicles uh, that were on Normandy on D-Day, uh, June 6, 1944. So this is definitely a piece of history, and we really appreciate you uh, bringing it this year and last year. And the, uh, the general that we have uh, coming today is going to ride in it, and I really thank you for, uh, for bringing it. It's an honor to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Memorial Day <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a remembrance. You can't afford to forget them. 